where did this story start with you and what inspired you? I mean, I was like, it's, it's my memory. Um, I was often sick when I was a kid. I, I don't quite remember those days. Like it's kind of foggy. But on the other hand, my parents' perspective, those events are way more serious. They told me they spent countless night taking care of me and fighting their own emotions. They keep on telling me how, how serious there was. Um, I didn't know why they were so worried, to be honest, as a kid. But as I got older, I started to empathize more and more with my parents, and especially since I moved to U.S. far away from home. It makes me the one who always worry about them. Like I'm like the, the character inverted. Um, especially uh, recently, since Wuhan is my hometown, uh, quickly after the news of the whole city shut down, I got word that my uncle had to stop the cancer treatment because you know the hospital is full and um, like my cousins still need to work. In both of my cousins need to work in the hospital um, where the co-workers already got infected. I video chat with them as often as I could, um, but um, when the camera turned off, all the horrible thoughts rushed back in that like, I don't know what to do. And that was the time we were crunching for this film. I remember we were animating the hospital sequence when the father character feel hopeless and sits on the floor. Um, I feel like I can totally sympathize with his pain. I think it's a good example that life imitates art, especially now at the time when people around the world are isolating, craving for connections. And also like some of us are preoccupied with health and well-being of the loved ones. So the story of Wind Up is really relevant. Thank you for that wonderful answer. That that really, uh, no, but it explains a lot. So Jason, how did this project find its way to you? So Ebing came to me, I knew her actually through my wife. They, they were friends. Uh, she was a bridesmaid actually at our wedding, <laughs> but, uh, but she needed um, an animator or someone to head the animation. Um, you know, their unity uh, where they made this is a gaming and tech uh kind of company and so they needed to get some people who had the film experience on board and that's where I came came board um, and for me I connected with it I I like the emotional tone of the whole film and um, and I uh, during production I actually my wife became pregnant and um, I was going to be a first-time dad so I uh, was able to connect to the dad think about that whole situation um, and the whole relatability, this was after the production was done, uh, My, I kind of had my moment, my example of, of this kind of um, sad sadness and needing of hope uh, where my son uh, had some breathing issues and was transferred to the, the uh, neonatal and in, uh, intensive care unit at the time. And for, for me, a lot of the, the doctors and nurses you know, instilled this hope, you know, on a day-to-day -day basis and allowed us, me and my wife to never kind of give up. And um, it kind of dawned on me how important this film that we just didn't just finish actually, how important that is for people to have, you know, either whether it's doctors or friends or family to uh, bring help, hope to them and, um, or a film. So um, I think it's a, yeah, a powerful film. There is a magical aspect to this movie because everybody can relate to what, what is going on, the theme of the story. And I'm not gonna ruin anything in this interview, but there is a, a lot that people can relate to with what is going on in the world, to the film, but there is a magic. And for me, like the magic is hope. Am, am I right about that? Uh, I believe love can win through the support of families and friends. And this kind of support and beliefs are especially important during this difficult times. So I really want people to feel hope when they watch it. And I love the fact that at the very end, you do uh, dedicate it to people that are going <laughs> through this, also the, the healthcare workers. But when did animation become real for you? It's interesting growing up, you, you kind of think that, uh, you know, you grow up that your granddad is a cartoonist or your uncle's an animator and you kind of go to a friend and you, what, your your uncle's not an animator? Your, your granddad's not a cartoonist? So, um, so I didn't understand 
the uh, you know who what they really did or who they really were I'm, i just thought everyone was this it was like that and maybe it was until um i i end up going to animation school i, I loved film and and i thought oh, well my uncle you know uh, works on films maybe i'll become an animator and work on films too um obviously that it's a harder uh it, it's very hard to be an animator in general so um but yeah it, during animation school you know a lot of people oh your uncle's glenn keen and i'm like yeah is that he's he's well known here <laughs> and i'm like really oh yeah okay maybe i should learn more about from him <laughs> which you know, he's taught me so many lessons and I'm super grateful.